Okay, uh, very good morning to all of you and welcome to yet another session on cyber security. Uh, this, this time we are going to have a session on uh, identifying fake websites, apps, messages, and email, and follow the best practices when we use the technology in cyberspace. So here we are, we are with us, Mr. Satish Shundi. Satish works as a technology manager with our Clicks project of TISS. So I welcome Satish for this session. Okay, uh, to, to begin, uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, to begin with, uh, it's uh, it's a very uh, it's a very tricky thing when people call it as a fake. Fake is something which looks like a real. You also have it in other products. You might have seen in a list of things like watches, which comes with the same brand. And you'll also have a cloth line, glass, sunglasses. There are many things people try to uh, copy something, imitate which looks like a real. And there are certain things like uh, sometimes the fake looks much more a good quality or a good finishing than original. And there are certain products you will not be, uh, our surface will not be able to identify which is real, which is fake. So now, uh, and in technology, what happens is if the fake websites, the fake messages are being kept for some reasons which also lead us to the larger repercussions, like we lose our, we, sometimes our identity theft, people will take our login passwords, and there are times where the financial transactions also happen when we follow these messages. So here we are attempting and, uh, to, uh, Satej will be taking us to some of the key points in identifying the fake messages, apps, websites, so that we, we take necessary precautions in using the web technologies for our day-to-day -day work. And it's not really work, even for our living, uh, the technology becomes essential even. We, we do a lot of financial transaction using mobile. Like people can live without their wallets, but not without their mobiles. So the days have been changing. Uh, so uh, we, we stay in a day where uh, this topic is much relevant. So I again welcome Satej to take forward this session for all of us. Thanks, Satej. Over to you. Yeah, yeah so uh, thank you, Siva, sir. So uh, for the brief introduction and also setting the tone. Uh, so uh, today we will try to address how the cybersecurity uh, space is all about and how we can take care of things in whatever possible manner we can do. Uh, to limit or the probability can be reduced. Uh, so with that statement, I would start. I'm just sharing my screen. Yeah. So uh, yeah, as, as the title says, uh, not to scare, but to educate. So these are few things that uh, these are and and these are highlighted meaning the the news that come over the newspapers in recent last two weeks only uh, or maybe uh, two to three weeks not more than that i just collated few of them uh, just to give you that uh, rel relativity and understanding that it's not that it is a myth or a, it's it's fact things are happening around you and, and we need to be really cautious about it. We need to be aware of it. And when we look at this cyber security as, as cyber security space, it's, it's really something that is day by day, minute by minute, it's, it's more and more important to address. Individuals need to aware of it and try to take precautions as much as they can. So we'll just take a glance of, these uh, highlights. So Lucknow uh, Chief Forest Conservator duped of rupees 1.2 lakh in phishing attack. India saw 18 million cyber attacks in first quarter of 22. Particularly, this is something that gone like the attacks were really high in 
uh, during the pandemic time where everyone was trying to attain things online and that's where the space was more vibrant for the bad actors as well. So I will not read out now, I'll just, which is, this one is I think the most of you may already know about, which is the recent one things are happening around and uh, aims, aims a ransomware attack. Things are still in, uh, not in stable state. You can also take a look at the dates of the news. Yeah. So, uh, and, and just before going to this, uh, I just want to also add, uh, yesterday only, uh, I got to know uh, one of the uh, person in, in my society who is doing uh, cleaning housekeeping person, got duped for 1.5 lakh rupees uh, just by some mobile tricks that uh, he fall to or he or she fall to and uh, and the person don't know how it happened 1.5 lakh rupees for that person was earning of almost more than a year of savings so so it's happening around yeah so uh, why this slide I thought like we'll just firstly start with like what is it that require for the uh, bad actors to bad actor when I'm saying bad actor wherever I'm referring to those are hackers and uh, people who are doing bad things around on the cyberspace. So what all things uh, required when someone wants to phishing like add, uh, like apply a phishing attack or different attacks that uh, Satish sir have explained in the last session. Uh, so basically, if we look at it, you I might need your name or a username on the space on the uh, internet space, your address, maybe uh, Aadhaar card, which is most uh, unique thing that supposedly take uh, care of things uh, for you. Uh, is, is also a point of contact, a point of uh, breach or point of uh, uh, entry for uh, attacks, cyber attacks, your credit debit cards, then uh, knowing about your date of birth, gender, your mobile numbers, maybe uh, family members names also enough for uh, falling you a trap into then uh, maybe your car bike numbers loan account bank account policy numbers so how this will help like to attack us like for example and and where this come from like how they collect the data or like where they can collect the data from for example so there are two three points i just had added sharing thing so i just added this word to like because this is a very buzzing and new word that is coming in is parents sharing things about their children's or their uh, family on the social media. So that is sharing thing. So where we put names of family members or the like where we are uh, currently going or uh, if we purchased a new car, then posting uh, like my new family member kind of this thing. But then uh, along with that, we are also posting uh, carelessly meaning the num numbers of the car or uh, bike also gets uh, available to the social media space uh, then sending sensitive information over emails messages messengers messengers are like whatsapp and telegram and such or such as so uh, where we share like, can you share a password for this account? Can you uh, share the bank details? Or, and we uh, we share these on SMS and such media where we need to really care about whether that medium is fully encrypted. The encryption uh, part is again explained in the last session, where uh, it is 
applied with some uh, algorithms and key where the only the receiver can read it and the medium or the transfer medium will not be able to read or enter into so such medium needs to be uh, very carefully utilized then uh, yeah this is something that i thought like because everyone is now putting uh, online orders uh, buying things online then uh, when we receive uh, packages delivery packages those packages have your addresses so where are these bad actors are sitting like those can be around you so you really need to take care of discarding these things properly uh, what is what what that means is like when we have these packages where we have like addresses are there for example we get the maintenance bill we get the light bills and we just throw them after a particular time and also but then those are having your uh, address your where you are staying and and how these things can be used for uh, attacking or phishing is like uh, like you get a call and says that like okay you have purchased so and so policy you have i'm i'm calling from this this bank and your policy is about to expire your account has to be taken care of like a strong action needs to be taken care and otherwise the account will get deactivated your credit card is about to uh, about to get uh, deactivated and and so on and and there so this this information where they will completely read out your uh, address mentioning you are staying here can you just confirm that you are staying here uh, this is your date of birth can you just uh, confirm that and then uh, obviously on the other side when we uh, hear the legitimate information that the caller is giving us then we obviously want to try to believe that okay this call is a proper or not a fraud call but like never answer things particularly banking and such things uh, on a call if you feel like okay there is a genuine problem go to the of go to the bank uh, go to the in person place understand and and then uh, act accordingly but never actually uh, fall prey to such calls so the next topic is about identifying fake websites so everyone says that okay when we uh, explore on the website or uh, on the internet you need to really care uh, be careful about uh, what websites and what kinds of websites we are actually visiting so how do we identify those so uh, these are some points but i would like to actually give you uh, practical demo so that we understand how things can be uh, worked out so one of the major thing is http versus https then the domain name security certificate verifying the business or organization legitimacy so uh, let's so i hope uh, my browser is the other browser is also visible yeah so uh, let's say any uh, let's take an example of any uh, website if you want to give some uh, example or because these are uh, things that are happening around so maybe we will just go and uh, we will go to the last page where there will be some of the other kind of yeah so for example so when we say https so this is something that is a secure uh, that s really is important whether uh, if it is not s the legitimate sites will automatically get redirected 
if the phenomenon is not there, do so for example, why how this difference looks like. So it, if it is not yes, then the browser itself will tell you that this is not a, a secure connection. And uh, banking websites will automatically take care of. So for example, let's say ESPI online. So even if I remove yes, it will automatically redirect to yes. You can, uh, I don't know if it, you, this is visible clearly to all of you, but yeah. So it will automatically redirect to, because this is a really uh, uh, important site for online transactions and everything. And you can see, and how do you identify whether like one is HTTPS, then connection is secure. Then you click on more information where you get the certificate of that site if you click on that it gives you the organization to which the certificate has been offered this certificate is for running their site securely on the on the internet and the organization name is like you can see the organization name who have issued so dg certificate so these are certificate authorities who authors the certificates and those are very uh, limited ones so keep note of such things and then uh, let's go to any other website where if it gives us z entertainment Enterprises Limited. So this looks legitimate. How do you identify? You can also look at their website. So there is C Entertainment. So what do you think? So then if you are not really able to like gauge like whether it is a fake website or not you look at about page if you have any contact number or contact us so firstly this got redirected to and 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 uh, to z www.c.com and uh, there is no information about how to contact even the uh, the words and uh, what needs to be there on the footer is also something that is suspicious looks like so okay so you, now we are we are confused whether this is really the z website or not or whether so let's look at z official website So there are two. So now there is something that we are getting. So and and uh, I will I will get get to these points where I am saying like why I am confidently visiting this uh, is uh, because I have already this. Uh, browser applied with all the kind all kinds of uh, securities and all but yeah so you can see z hyphen official why do we so there is something fishy here right so let's look at the certificate zero ssl And this is a website. So certainly there is something that is not obvious. Then uh, if you want to look at like where I can uh, contact or so there is no information such. So such things are important to look at. Still, we don't get like or understand whether this is proper or not. Then there are some tools 
which we can use for like for example scamvoid.net scam hyphen detector scam watcher or uh, you can also directly search for such things scam point okay then you copy the url put in here check website so it's it is applying whether this is not a bot So this is now checking if the website is uh, subject to all the parameters uh, suffices the major correct major uh, parameters. And it gives you potentially safe, but there are some warnings and uh, also the reasons why a particular um, because the domain block listing is not happened yet so then because of that also it is saying that it is potentially safe but there are some warnings also similarly uh, such things can be uh, searched on such uh, scam hyphen detector scam watcher and and such so you can directly search for website uh, on the search engine also. Find uh, website. Yes. But then there also can there can be uh, suggestions which are uh malicious so you uh, have to look for those uh, sources also should be legitimate so this url wide is also one of the good uh, example okay so now going back to so uh, so these are some simple and uh, uh, steps or practices that when one can follow to understand whether the website is fake or legitimate then uh, identifying fake apps so so this is also something that needs to be like because no one uh, like maybe 80 percent of the people are actually uh, browsing internet surfing internet from mobile rather than uh, laptop or desktop or such devices so this becomes a very crucial part so uh, how do you identify the apps are fake or legitimate so there are certain things that we need to take care of as like always keep the apps updated with the latest versions uh, on your mobile use official authentic play stores for respective devices for example android apps or android mobiles have google play store as a most uh, uh, standard and authentic play store but it doesn't really uh, uh, suffice that if you are using authentic or uh, standard play store that means everything is uh, everything is absolutely correct or like all the things are the apps are very uh, legitimate then uh, for example i just mentioned about like wanted to uh, indicate like whatsapp because that is something that we use on a uh, most of where us use on a daily basis so uh, keep the whatsapp updated disable automatic downloads of files so this is really important if you have uh, not done this you should uh, go to go to whatsapp uh, and then you go to the settings and uh, disable the automatic downloads of files why this is required there are two three uh, advantages for uh, because of that is like uh, one the malicious files will not enter into your phone secondly you save storage it, it will not get full automatically only things that you feel like okay i need to actually look at this file or any forward or anything 
then you download and uh, after looking at add kit you can uh, again delete right away so uh, space will also be utilized uh, storage of uh, the phone will also be utilized properly then uh, disable or delete chat backups yeah so this is something that uh, like we say that whatsapp like recently whatsapp have come up with this end to end encryption where we say that okay any message that goes on the whatsapp will be encrypted from the sender side and will, will be decrypted at the receiver end okay so that channel of medium is uh, encrypted but what if because whatsapp also keep the backup of chats in your storage device so what if the what if your phone gets uh, attacked and uh, those backups are not encrypted so those can be read out uh, so wherever frequently or after certain time you should keep the checks and uh, clean the cache or such backups which are not really required observe the app permissions background activities this is something that we'll just take a look at it uh, and then keep visiting uh, settings on a periodic basis so i'm just sharing my screen uh, of the mobile where i thought like uh, instead of just giving uh, examples let's try out some things on the mobile itself so when we say that uh, look at the permissions or so let's go to app manager and and whenever we go to settings you don't really need to keep searching for things uh, like where we should go and there is path or there is something that is mentioned so how do i identify it or something so don't really need to look at it you have search option you just go there uh, and check for security so let's say for example device security you have google so this is one of the important thing google place uh, google play protect which is a uh, uh, protection by play store itself has been there but then again it's not 100% uh, guarantees that everything is so uh, you can scan this periodically uh, or whenever such thing happens like if you want to uh, then keep the options of uh, so you can see here so this should always be on so that play store uh, utility itself can scan things for you then uh, let's let's look at uh, again yeah so let's take the similar example pradhan mantri janadhan yojana okay so how do you identify and uh, look at the whether the app is legitimate or not so observe i don't know if you were able to see the screen uh, observe the size of the should be uh, so this is again not a one criteria there can be multiple things but what all things that we can look for then downloads so downloads are like uh, 10 trillion so that means there is something uh, okay with the app the rating is 5 okay that is something uh, need to be take care or looked at but yeah so then uh, so let's go to because generally the suggestions that comes up are most likely will have some of the other beneficiary or like not really that much uh, uh, fake or something but yeah maybe we go for something which is more you know, yeah let's go for this pmo india okay so uh, by looking at uh, app you feel like okay this is from government of india because it says pmo india you have a logo there something which is related to government's logo uh, and it has 5 trillion reviews it, at least it says that uh, the size is 5.6 mb uh, and then uh, 10 lakh downloads so 10 lakh downloads is not something like if it is 10 uh, it has 10 lakh downloads it doesn't really mean that it is a legitimate app so be careful about that so uh, 
then look at screenshots whether such screenshots are uh, any uh, look for any spelling mistakes or uh, any uh, suspicious and and you always it will not give you 100% this thing because this can be just uh, taken from uh, internet and put in there so about this app look at the information go to the app information then offered by my geo india so check for this now uh, we need to check if this my geo india is really legitimate or bought so let's go to developers so these are all reviews we will get back to that so developer contact for every app there is this section available which says uh, developer uh, contact where it is uh, giving you developers at rate my gov dot in so this uh, domain so domain is uh, the part after at the rate which is at the rate my gov dot in my gov dot in so uh, government website generally have the domain which is dot gov dot in or at the rate gov dot in but this is not really so after dot is the domain part uh, the main uh, domain part so that here very carefully and very uh, 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 what do we say uh, smartly the domain selected as my gov dot in which for end users it looks like it's government's website let's look at the website itself uh, I'm opening this, so just once. So the website is pmindia.gov.in. So uh, connection is secure, it says. Verified by Let's Encrypt. Then uh, So uh, pmindia.gov.in. Everywhere there is a photo of uh, So let's look at the uh, website itself uh, on the what was our tool that we had mentioned about is uh, find website legitimacy. Yeah, one. So you can see the IP address unknown, reverse DNS unknown. So these are like unknown things available here. Then uh, you can also go for who is lookup. So who is lookup is actually there is very this is simple website to remember also who dot is which gives you like who is actually hosting this website and information about that it's loading It says uh, on, on the, uh, because it is mobile view, it is not really giving it clear this thing, but yeah. And, and 
we'll uh, get back to this but there is something fishy about this site uh, also you look at the reviews so all the reviews that you look at uh, you can look for positive critical and like let's look at the five star ones first so it says that contacting various government department this is not really telling about the app i have no money to invest so i will again not telling about the app very good platform to express uh, the the spelling also you can look at uh, so and generally omnivirus eats fruits and vegetables freely so is nothing related to website uh, app itself and then uh, google user is giving so this is uh, purposefully given five star uh, for so so this is something that really need to be looked at critical is something that genuine users might have like uh, if they have found uh, something problematic but then again users are finding it as if uh, it's a government's website and it is actually asking for registration where it is uh, asking for mobile number your username password you can see you get uh, to enter basic information and get a valid otp but it didn't not uh, it did not connect so you can see so such things are there so you really need to be uh, careful about and then it's not only about looking at the play store app so look for those uh, official website of that app contact developer uh, information and so on then uh, so keep the security uh, of the background security of the uh, apps also uh, explored if there is any uh, background activity allowed so keep the if the app is not running keep the background activities off look for security updates of the mobile always keep the uh, operating system of the uh, mobile itself also up to date and so on so uh, yeah looking at the time i'll just go back to uh, slides so so uh, this is about uh, how do you identify fake apps then uh, identifying fake messages and emails so uh, here also you need to really care careful about if the messages are uh, received on mobile then or uh, on emails please look for the sender information the domain information of that sender email uh, from from email then look for subject or any uh, even the email body where uh, it is giving you something urgency where saying that your storage is about to expire or your storage is about to be get full so on on uh, on our tis mails also we sometimes we receive such malicious uh, mails and uh, from uh, anonymous user where it says like actually it is come from some uh, ex person uh, posing that that ex person is asking for a meeting then in in first go it's that email is not that email body is not having much links or anything but it is just asking for uh, like whether you are available then you reply to that email that means the the person the replier is now uh, ready to be captured or ready to be uh, so then the next uh, re, uh, revert of the next reply of that email would have uh, may some some links where you have to click and go for join the meeting and maybe uh, it, on the text it says the uh, uh, meeting link but internally it is not the uh, actually the legitimate uh, mail so let's uh, for example look at some junk yeah email invitation so how do you identify or like so what you do is like if you take a mouse uh, on that link the mouse over gives you at the bottom it always the left bottom it gives you the in the link of that uh, text 
if it is uh, if it is on phone or something you just right click don't click on it copy the link address and uh, check for it on some other application maybe word document not on the uh, browser itself and paste it here so the moment it comes with so much of this thing it certainly it might have some fishy code or some parameters which will run the anonymous scripts on your device and and then look for this link whether it is legitimate and apply those how to identify fake website and processes yeah then uh, and there are uh, tools online available which can give you uh, whether the given url is valid or not uh, so email validate the url void is also one of the example that we just saw then email where it does and uh, such examples are there such tools which can give you uh, process to check the legitimacy then uh, browser best usage practices where uh, so we will just directly jump to few uh, important things uh, here uh, so i have this uh, firefox browser where you have these add-ons so for example if you go to uh, what i'm doing i have added these add-ons what it does is if i visit something uh, maybe let's go at zoom.us so you can see these add-ons are blocking the trackers so when i am visiting this site there are other sites that are actually tracking my uh, surfing or So what I will do is I'll just disable this uh, off, off, off. Then uh, just so disconnect is one of the add-on on the. Uh, I'll just give you uh, how it looks like, what it gives you. So you can see there are a number of things that are actually uh, getting tracked and then whether it is getting blocked or not is also green if green it is allowed if it is red or something it is not allowed blocking by the add-ons so how do you add these add-ons so you just have to go to add-ons and look for uh, extensions like for example add blocker you search for those and it will give you the add blocker add-ons again you have to look for uh, legitimacy of add-ons also how many users have used what is like the browser itself says that it is recommended and so on then there is a uh, uh, blocker. You blog origin so such add-ons uh, should be part of your browser and uh, you keep those added activated also so that uh, you are more secure and because i was having these things i was trying to show you the fake website summit then uh, so let's jump to the best practices in cyberspace uh, so multiple email accounts on different domains for different purposes would be good to have. Uh, most of us generally have only an um, Gmail or Yahoo mail, but uh, it's okay to have multiple email accounts and multiple domains you have on Google, on Gmail, you have on Yahoo, you can have uh, other uh, open source uh, email providers where you, uh, have accounts use uh, for multiple different purposes. Social media should have different uh, email account uh, for that purpose. Then uh, 
for banking and uh, such domains you have different account so that what happens is like there is not a single failure like a single point of failure that mean, what i mean is like if uh, your account gets hacked uh, like if your gmail account for example gets like, the password that we generally keep are simple or anything that people gets uh, uh, access to then from there one can then go to uh, banking uh, your internet banking your social media and everything because it like all the spaces are connected to that single email account so keep such things in mind uh, password patterns uh, use pattern uh, password managers like key pass uh, for uh, generating passwords don't use uh, your date of birth your mobile number your name uh, in in password uh, of any uh, any account uh, so keep it uh, combination of uh, special characters text and uh, numbers and uh, more than eight characters so that the things can be more uh, complex for hacking the passwords then uh, don't use or avoid public wi-fi uh, usage and if at all you really need to use it uh, then use via vpn so what is vpn virtual private network is something that i think uh, last session had addressed uh, so how uh, ports have uh, you know uh, the entry or exit the origin there is one main gate and then there is uh, like the older ports do have such uh, exits which are not really uh, easily identifiable so this is just an example so what it gives you is uh, the the end user's address or the ip address is not tra traceable on the virtual private network hence uh, if you are trying to use for uh, public wi-fi do use virtual private networks then uh, keep the devices password pattern protected uh, so for example yeah so this is one of the thing uh, one of my uh, friend had an accident and then uh, so he thought like okay my mobile should be uh, accessible to when if such emergency comes then the people around should be able to contact by using my mobile then he disabled the uh, pattern of the or lock screen of the mobile which is not really good practice so keep a uh, scan a thumb thumb uh, printing as a uh, screen lock if that that is the concern and also don't use the obvious uh, finger uh, which generally you might have used for other card or such things keep it something uh, different uh, and then uh, people need to know that okay so now the mobile comes with the power button if you press three times quickly then it it you don't need, really need to uh, unlock the phone you can directly get emergency SOS calls where a uh, call goes to uh, nearest police station where you can then uh, where you can inform. So uh, general, uh, everyone should know such things that are available so that one can help each other. Then, uh, so if you are using remote desktop or mobile sharing apps, uh, try to avoid if you are using it use only when it is most needed and delete after the using of such apps right away uh blue bugging is something that is uh, now coming up uh, blue bugging is a bluetooth bugging meaning attacking through bluetooth of the device bluetooth so generally our devices have these bluetooths on all the time we should not keep that all the time uh, on uh, definitely not discoverable when it is not required uh, and uh, disconnect uh in between or periodically from all the uh, devices that connected uh, in the past so that you know the, the recent ones are only connected yeah use the latest browser and software for internet exploration yeah i think that is what you mentioned uh best practices particularly for the internet banking uh if you are doing internet banking from a device uh and a browser uh then uh, do it from incognito window uh, so that anything like all the cache and because browser saves cache or temporary data which should not be done so use incognito window 
uh, and log out manually from the account, uh, be it a mobile app or be it a incognito window or uh, wherever you have uh, done the internet banking right away uh, after completion of the process, log out. Uh, after all these things, if there is anything that happens with the mobile, like if you accidentally click on something which is suspicious or something, right away you put your mobile or a device on the uh, flight mode, uh, then switch it off, then switch it on, then remove the uh, flight mode, and then observe the pattern and everything. So why this is uh, required is like right away if there is something that go enters into your phone. And if you do that, it, uh, the chances are it will clear the uh, cache and everything. Uh, also, you can do from, uh, if you're techno savvy, then you can also do from the settings also. Uh, and then, uh, so keep only the latest mobile numbers registered with the bank. And uh, so, for example, if my mobile number gets stolen or my mobile gets stolen, then uh, immediately you do uh, register fir with the police that my mobile has been stolen or if uh, and, and uh, deactivating and then that fir copy you need to take it to your service provider be it uh, like airtel geo or vodafone or something go to the gallery official gallery uh, show them this uh, fir and uh, ask them to disable the number right away don't uh, keep it active uh, if you are taken the new number, then uh, take care of registering or mapping that number with the bank and older number should not be uh, there. If you at all need to be changed the uh, mobile number because it was hacked and And yes, keep sharing the knowledge and keep educating uh, people around so that uh, we can take care of each other in the cyberspace. Yeah. So uh, thank you and have a safe browsing. And uh, just to uh, the last uh, statement I just want to make here is uh, the analogy I would give is uh, like, as we stay in a home where we have doer, then we apply uh, uh, extra, uh, what do we safety doer, there is second uh, door that we uh, put there. Then we apply grills on our uh, windows. Why do we do that? To keep the home safe. But does that always give you the guarantee that the everything like it will not be uh, uh, poached or it will be always safe? The answer lies with you. Uh, so similarly, all these practices that we have talked about are the best practices that can avoid or lessen the possibilities, but it's not always guarantees. So, but then it is gonna give you a uh, higher, higher chances that you will not get uh, fished or attacked. Yeah, so that's it from my side. Hi, uh, can we take up some questions? Okay, Viresh has asked what is in cognito mode? Can you just show in your browser? Uh, sorry, yeah. What? There is a question uh, asked by uh, Dr. Viresh, oh. he is a deputy oh. librarian in Jaipur campus. Please explain what is in cognito window. Okay, okay, yeah. So uh, incognito window, uh, so generally when we open a browser, so by default it opens, for example, like this, right? Uh, why I'm op using Chrome now is because generally all of you are more aware of this, but I recommend uh, going beyond Chrome and use Firefox. There is a browser that is coming in. Uh, but uh, so this is general uh, browser where, but if you go to these three dots on the right top corner, you have this new incognito window. So incognito window, what it does is, this is normal window where uh, whatever you uh, search here, for example, uh, my search, my activity or, okay, I'll just, 
I'll just do a random search. I'm just doing a random search. And then uh, what I am going to do is here, uh, I will go to the history of the browser. Okay. So you can see. So if you go to the history, all the pages that I visited and everything is there, right? Now I will go to incognito window. Now here I visit, uh, uh, I don't know, like I'm again going back to the same uh, this thing. Then SPI, SPI online. Okay. And so doing some random search. So I visited these three sites, right? But the browser doesn't keep track of uh, or caching of these things. How do I know? Because there is no uh, history, for example, for this. Now I will just close this incognito window. Go back to uh, I, I'm just I can refresh this, but I'm just showing you again. If I go to history, you know, only this twelve zero one, which was the last till this, but all the three sites that we visited on in in, in incognito window are not listed or not kept track of. Okay. So uh, use these uh, this incognito window, especially when you are uh, going in a now nowadays we are not really going that that space where the cyber uh, cafe or such places where we uh, access or I'm accessing um, something some information or some site from my friend's device or something or such places you should not go to the normal window use always the incognito yeah. I hope this gives you understanding of what is incognito and why it is required. Yeah, yes, but thanks, message as well. Thanks, Virish. Uh, uh, does anyone want to ask any other questions? Or we'll share you the videos as well. Uh, there is another question. Uh, this is Mr. Prabhu Gaddimani. Any software available for mobile antivirus? Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, for mobile, there are uh, antiviruses available. Uh, I am an open source believer. So uh, if there are any such things that needs to be uh, accessed, you should. Uh, so I'm, I'm giving you a, a tip of the day. So F-Droid is a open source Play Store open source play store f hyphen droid dot org oh my screen is not visible i must i am i'm sorry i'm just uh, again sharing this so uh, i'm not gonna give you the names of the software or anything but then yeah uh, i'm just giving you a tip of the day so f droid f hyphen droid dot org so this is a open source uh, play store where one can go and uh, so look uh, download this and uh, look for things these applications are open source and uh, then you can search for antivirus and <coughs> so on yeah again apply those uh, criteria and uh, if it is if it doesn't have it will not say uh, So you can also download this on your uh, mobile own and also search from there. So there is one available. Libre AV. Yeah. So Satish, there is another question. Okay. Antivirus is actually required? Is one. Uh, well, is a mobile antivirus actually required? Which are the best antivirus for laptops or computers? Yeah, so uh, it's good to have. 
uh, if you have antivirus, uh, well and good. Like for example, as I, I showed, uh, there are some add-ons on the Firefox browser, which gives you extra. So they are doing a job for you to check if the websites are legitimate and they are blocking uh, the backend trackers and such thing. So similarly, antiviruses are also doing that. But having said that, you have to select antivirus very uh, wisely very uh, carefully because uh, the it's wo marathi mein ek kahawat hai ki kumpna ne shet khana manje uh, it's like uh, meaning the the protector itself is uh, taking uh, you for the toss so look for uh, legitimate antiviruses yeah it is good to have and as i said uh, i am a believer of open source things uh, why open source and all i think that is a topic of discussion but yeah, uh, look for uh, at least open source things. In one liner, if I want to say what is like why open source or what is an open source is because open source gives you the transparency of like what that particular application or software is doing in the background, you know, uh, meaning uh, those uh, th that code and uh, everything is available online. You can go and check. So come, there is like, even if you don't really understand completely, but there is a community who understands the importance and what is happening in the background for this app. So uh, everyone is looking at that. Uh, hence the open source is more of a controller for from, for the, uh, from the community side rather than uh, the controllers or the creators of those. Yeah. Any other uh, question? Or... Questions, one more question we can take if anyone types it. Yeah, the last one. So I tried keeping not a complex session. I tried to bring uh, as simple practices as we can and uh, more of a demo uh, kind of a things. I know in 40 minutes or 60 minutes, I can't make a justice to these things, but uh, I tried my best to give you the demonstration of things uh, instead of just uh, like giving you the to do's and not to do's kind of. Uh, so I I hope that is helpful. I I, I just request Mr. Satish Thambi to propose a vote of thanks to the speaker. Satish, you are here. Oh. Satish, okay. I think we, we might be an activity issue. Yeah, he's there, but I think. Uh, and thanks thanks for a wonderful session. Uh, we also want to keep it limited with the show how to do it. Sir, some questions, some blah. Sir, I am audible. Yes, Satish. Ah, Satish. Sir, I am audible. Satish. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Hi, yes, you are Adevala. Satish. Ah, yes, yes, sir. So, uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Actually, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, it has been such an honor to be part of uh, these uh, wonderful sessions on cybersecurity awareness. Actually, uh, this is uh, uh, most important in your daily life because today is the internet world or many users are using the uh, latest technology for the communications. So on behalf of the uh, computer center TISS, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest, Mr. Sat uh, Sat Satesh Shinde, uh, technology manager, center of excellence, in teacher educations. Thank you, sir. Actually, sir, those contents we have explained in this, in this session very uh, truly inspired and helpful us because today's world is internet. Day-to-day -day user became a victim of cyber uh, crimes. So we'll remember those things we have explained. For example, use the latest browser, uh, latest software for internet explosions. You have explained very nicely, HTTP versus HTTPS. All these things we are 
uh, uh, very important into day to day internet works also uh, uh, sincere thank to mr shiv kumar chair person of the computer centers who uh, uh, handle this event throughout or organize every month because sir actually today date it is very important because every 11 second uh, 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 every 11 second cyber cyber crime will be hit that's why this is most important thank to all the participants who made the sessions a memorable one finally i would like to thank all of you present here for making the time to be with us today and helping us make this sessions a grand success thank you one and all yeah thank you all and uh, thank you for giving me a chance of sharing my possible knowledge yeah have a good day thanks everyone to be part of this session thank yeah. you